is fire conductive. In my last video, I showed that glass becomes conductive when it becomes molten. In doing this, I heated up two 120 volt electrodes separated by glass with a blowtorch. But several commenters told me I wasn't being very safe by applying fire to these live wires. That's because just as it says on Google, they've learned that fire is conductive. So today I'm going to be putting that to the test and seeing how conductive fire actually is. Then I'll be seeing if we can maximize this with a truly conductive fire made out of plasma. Finally, I'll check for sure if fire could shock me by setting up my arm in the current path and completing the circuit with fire. Fire is a partial plasma. I myself have mentioned this many times on my channel and even hinted that fire could conduct electricity. But if fire is conductive, we should be able to complete a circuit with it, right? Now I've got my 200 watt light bulb connected to my 120 volt line. The only reason it's not on is because right there, these electrodes aren't connected. But if they touch, the light bulb turns on. So I'm gonna put them really close together Let's see if a flame can make the light bulb light up now. So there's just a tiny gap between there now. So the fire cannot complete the circuit. So we can see that with normal fire, there just isn't enough conductivity to turn on the light bulb. But this is an incandescent bulb. Maybe I just needed too much current. So let's try it with an LED bulb that only uses 14 watts of power. It only needs about 0.1 amps to turn on. and it still doesn't turn on either. So fire just isn't conductive enough to complete this circuit. But could we make a fire that's more conductive than normal fire? Well, yes, we can. There are relatively few ions in fire because they're only being generated from heat. But what if we generate a lot more ions with a super strong electric field that rips off electrons from the air? This is an ultra high frequency Tesla coil. This device can reach more than a million volts of AC potential. This is enough to create a plasma cloud above it. So unlike fire, this plasma cloud is much denser. So there should be a lot more charge carriers in here that can sustain the current. So let's test if a true plasma, not just a partial plasma like fire, can have enough conductivity to light up the bulb. So you can see there's only a tiny gap between those electrodes now. Now let's strike the plasma and see if it can complete that gap. Nope. So the plasma is forming in between them. But look at that, the light bulb is off. It doesn't complete the circuit. Okay, I really thought that this was going to work. Let's try it even with our LED bulb. Still doesn't light up. This is really surprising. Even a true plasma ball doesn't have enough conductivity to complete the circuit. I've always thought of plasmas as very conductive paths all the time, but they aren't always conductive. So can I get any light bulb to turn on with fire? Well, fire is a partial plasma, and I know very small currents can move through it. So in this setup, what I have is just a simple circuit that uses an NPN transistor to see if we can light up this white light bulb here. So in this case, the air isn't conductive enough to complete the circuit and apply a voltage to the transistor to turn on the bulb. But if I put some fire in between the contacts, then I can actually light up the bulb. So finally, we could use fire as part of a circuit to turn on a bulb. But I know what you're all thinking. Sure, this is all really interesting, but it didn't answer the original question. If I put fire on a live wire, could enough current go through the fire to shock me? Well, let's see. The original setup of having two wires that complete the circuit had a low chance of shocking me since it's a shorter path for the current to just move through the little gap here than go all the way through the long flame to my body, which isn't very well grounded anyways. So instead, let's set up an ideal path for me to get shocked and see if I can get shocked. So let's connect my arm directly to the torch like this, and then I'll torch the live wire. If an electrical connection is made or any current flows, it will go through my arm. So now what this setup does is if I connect this to this electrode, it will shock me across my arm like this. Oh man. So I'm just gonna touch it to see if it works. 
Oh, okay, it works. <laughs> okay, let's turn on our torch. I've made this safe for me to test. First, I'm using 40 volts DC, and I'm limiting the current to around 50 milliamps. At this level, I'm going only through my arm. It's enough to shock me, but it won't injure me. I don't feel anything. So I didn't feel anything, but if I just slightly touch it, then it shocks me. <laughs> so I think this is pretty clear that there's not enough current at all for me to feel anything when using a torch. So it seems that there really isn't a danger to getting shocked using fire near live wires. Psych, it's always dangerous using fire and live wires. But not because fire is conductive, but it's because it's hot. Let me show you what I mean. I have two wires connected to a flyback transformer that will charge these wires to around 30,000 volts. If the wires are close enough together, then a spark can occur across the leads here. This is called a dielectric breakdown when this happens. Now I'm just going to move the wires so they're a little too far apart to make a spark jump the gap. But now let's try to put some fire in between and see what happens. So as soon as I stick the fire in between, the spark can suddenly jump. But this isn't happening because the fire is conductive, it's happening because the fire is hot. Hot air has a lower dielectric breakdown voltage than colder air. So let's see if we can get the same thing to happen with a heat gun instead of fire. Okay, here's my heat gun. Whoa. It's just the hot air needed. So fire can be very dangerous near high voltages because it makes it so that the electric arcs can form much easier. And these arcs can jump to you who's holding the torch. Now that we've done hands-on experiments to test if fire is conductive, let's actually measure its resistance and see how it compares. In order to measure this, I have two steel sheets separated by a fourth of an inch. Then I'll just use my multimeter to measure the resistance between these two contacts. So right now it's not reading any resistance because it's too high. Now let's strike the flame. Okay, we got the fire going between there. And we're at 2.6 mega ohms. That means for 120 volts, you can only get around 20 microamps of current through the fire. This isn't enough to light up any bulb or even feel a slight tingle or shock. This value places fire as more conductive than insulators like glass or rubber, but much less conductive than any metal or semiconductor. But what's interesting to me is that even a proper plasma isn't that conductive. So in our setup with the Tesla coil plasma in the circuit, why didn't any significant current flow? This was surprising to me. Well, it all has to do with the ion density. In our setup with the plasma candle trying to complete the circuit, the ion density to make this glow still wasn't that high. So in order to make a really conductive plasma, you need that plasma to be part of the circuit. And once it's part of the circuit, the current can create a runaway event that causes more current to flow. This is because plasmas have something called negative resistance. This means that the more current you flow through a plasma, the lower voltage drop across the plasma. So if you want a superconductive plasma with a lot of ions that can contain a high current flow, then you need to give it high currents in the first place. For example, in an arc welder, the resistance of the arc is only a few ohms once it's struck up. Whereas if I measure the resistance of this plasma by applying a voltage and checking the current flow, I get that it has a resistance of only around 6,000 ohms. So it's a much higher resistance than in a higher density arc like in welding. The fascinating nature of fire and plasma conductivity hinges on its ion density. Fire has much too low of an ion density to carry any significant current. And plasmas can be on the lower end of conductivity all the way up to very conductive. And thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comments section, and we'll see you next time.